Hi and welcome back to the SI Tech Demo Day. Thank you so much for sticking around with us all day. Um, this one is definitely worth it. I now have the pleasure of introducing you to Michael Brittle, um, EVP of Digital and Analytics at Xeno Group. He is going to be walking you through the five critical questions to ask your social data tech vendors before you go ahead and purchase. Now this is a big topic for a lot of you because we get a lot of emails about this very topic every single day. What, how do I know what the best te technology is that I should be purchasing? So Michael's going to walk you through some of his insights from all his experience in going and going through that process. Michael, handing over to you now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, who doesn't love software RFPs? I've been doing this since probably the beginning of time. And it's actually really fun to do because it helps me learn uh, new software platforms and, and being a user of software, uh, not just a decision maker. For me, it allows me to really kind of dig and look under the cover to understand, you know, what platforms, um, what they really provide from a, from a data and analytics standpoint. And um, so I'm hoping that this, this presentation is, is uh, valuable to you, that it's actionable. And I just want to say that this is not based on theory or it's not based on what I think are the right questions to ask. These are actually questions that I ask because I want to make sure that if I'm investing 10, 20, 30, $40,000 a year for a piece of software, that I'm getting exactly what I want. And I hope that that's the same for you. So um, just real quick, I want to just talk a little bit about myself. I've been on the agency side for about, I don't know, 13 years and been at Xeno Group for almost three years. And it's, we're an integrated agency and I lead all of our analytics. Um, so I'm helping our B2B clients and our healthcare clients and consumer understand data, but more importantly, make it actionable. What's the point of looking at numbers and, unless you can you know, apply it to something to improve a piece of content or improve you know, uh, an ad or whatnot. And so I, I've been doing this a long time. I enjoy it. Um, I've done a few TEDx talks. I am an adjunct professor at San Jose State. I've also taught at the business school at UC Berkeley, and I've written three books. And interestingly enough, none of those books are about data. Um, they're about more social media, social engagement. Um, and my first book was in 2011 um, about the idea that companies need to figure out social intelligence internally before they you know, engage externally with, with their customers. And so uh, you know, the other two are a little bit more uh, sophisticated in brand as media company and things of that regard. So. Um, today, though, we're talking about the idea of um, making the right decision uh, for the right software. And I want to apply that to a more strategic conversation. Now, what we're looking at is a model that I developed, and it's been in process in, you know, for about five years or so, and it's changed a lot since then. And this is what I would call the supply and demand of brand relevance. And if you look at the right, um, the, the demand piece of the business, um, think about analytics and think about how you can understand each of these audiences. And these are the questions I ask clients. What stories are your audiences writing about, sharing, discussing um, that are demanding their attention, right? So depending upon who your audience is, it could be traditional media. If you work in PR, it could be a group of influencers. Let's just say 10 influencers on security or fashion or, you know, beauty, or it could be, you know, different audience groups, your customers. And so once you understand who your audience is, then you have to ask yourself, is my content meeting the demand of my audience, right? So looking at the left in the model here, we're looking at a couple of different pieces, right? It's your own content. It's the stuff that you have complete control over your website, your blog, your newsroom, your, uh, you know, any community forums that you own. Um, it is your earned media. So what, did it, what is it that you're pitching to the media and how are they writing about your business? And then your social content, right? These are things that you have control over outside of earned media, but you do have a little bit of control there. And the, the opportunity is when there's overlap, right? And so the question is, well, how do we know what is demanding the attention of our audience, right? And I'm glad you asked that because there is software for that. And, uh, you know, but I don't, I want to say that software is not the end all for all of your, um, it's not going to solve all your problems, right? You still need a layer of human analysis on top of um, your, uh, your data stack, okay? Because otherwise, you're just counting mentions. So starting again from the right, these are, these are platforms that I use and have used in the past to understand, for example, 
what the media is saying about a topic. How is it, in, how is it uh, uh, resonating with their audiences online? What are their, what are their unique vi monthly visitors like from a, from a web traffic standpoint? And these are platforms that I use and I've circled them in red and added the, the platform above. So I use Brandwatch, Alexa, and Muckrack. And, and, and we all know what Brandwatch is. Alexa's interesting if you've been in SEO or you under, or you've, you know, you, back in the day, they used to have an Alexa score. And, you know, they were acquired by Amazon, and I think partly because of the Alexa product. But Alexa web analytics is second to none. I highly recommend that you check it out. It's, I think it's alexa.com and see what you can do with their content discovery tool. It's pretty amazing. Now, from an influencer standpoint, I use Tracker and Brandwatch. Um, audience groups. So again, depending upon what business you're in, if you're in healthcare, maybe your audience are doctors or nurses or physicians. Uh, if you work in technology or IT, it is, you know, engineers and developers. Uh, if you are selling beer, it is beer enthusiasts or people, you know, within a certain demographic. We use audience and um, they're one of my favorite tools because they're uh, pretty robust and I think their, 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 their math behind their platform is, is a second to none and it really provides amazing insights about groups of people. Now, going back on the left, there's also analytics to help you understand how you're performing. Not necessarily performing, but more about how you are positioned in the marketplace because this isn't about measurement. Measurement is important. I look at analytics to inform, right? What type of insight can I find? Can I, can I you know, within an insight to make my content better? to make my stories better, to make, to make sure that I'm bidding on all the keywords that my audience is using when they are uh, talking about uh, whatever topics that are important to my business, okay? So again, this is a model, a strategic model around, around supply and demand, and it's really about building relevance, right? How do, you, how do you become more relevant and relate to your customers? And you can get that relevancy through data and analytics, okay? So, Moving on to the next slide here. Now, this is just a quick, I, I laugh at this because you know, there's, a, there's a, a restaurant in the US um, called the Cheesecake Factory and their, their menu is like 10 pages, right? And, and I go there and I'm like confused. I'm, you know, I don't know where to start. It takes me 25 minutes to figure out what I want to eat because it's like full of you know, hamburgers and macaroni and cheese and steaks and pastas. And, there, and it's the same kind of concept with vendors. I mean, there are vendors out there that say, we do it all, right? We do social listening, we do media intelligence, we do you know, influencer analytics, we do audience intelligence. And the reality is that they probably do, but some of those areas, they're probably not as proficient as more specialized software vendors. And so for me, I like the more simplistic menus, right? Because looking on the right here, I can order a cheeseburger or a bacon cheeseburger for for $4.99, and I know exactly what I want. It takes me less than 30 seconds to make a decision. Now, I'm not saying that you should make a decision on software quickly. What I'm saying is, is that you need to be strategic about how you're determining what type of software you're going to use. Now, I put this, business, this uh, buyer's journey in here because I want to stress the point that you should be going through this buyer's journey yourself, okay? As a marketer, I study these buyer's journeys for audiences that we're trying to reach. And this is one that we recently built for IT. And the idea is, is that, you know, there's, you know, traditional entry points into the buyer's journey, but then there's also purchase factors, right? So these purchase factors are going to change based on who you are and what type of software you're looking at and uh, looking for. After that, it's pretty much all over the place. You can see there's, there's lines and there's journeys that go to and from building requirements to exploring the solutions. And then all of the touch points, right? The, the validation of peers, the Googling, the GitHub engagement, you know, reading reviews on G2 Crowd and others. And this is important because you have to have as much knowledge as, as you can before you make the right decisions in purchasing the right software. Now, the hardest part in this, uh, or the, the, towards the vendor selection, you'll see consensus. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute because that really is the most difficult step is getting consensus with your internal stakeholders. And so we did a recent RFP and we put together this Excel document and we put a scoring guide together. And we broke it down by the things that we thought were important to our business. Um, for, so in terms of you know, the business, the cost, support, data, exporting, analyzing conversations, audience, API functionality, things like that. 
And then we were able to basically allow everyone to score their, put their own scores in. And then we weighted it on the back end and we, that helped us decide which vendor to select uh, for the software that we were in the market for. And so this is great because it's, it helps ensure that everybody internally is part of the process. Okay. So you're not just, if you're in marketing or, or analytics, you can't just make these decisions in a bubble because you have multiple stakeholders, multiple users. You want to make sure that you can get their input so that you are at least addressing what their concerns and requirements are before you make that uh, decision. Now, a couple of things and focus areas. Number one, requirements. Document them and don't budge. A lot of times a vendor will say, well, we can't do that or we're planning to do that next year. Uh, so, so, you know, let's just sign a contract and we'll, you know, we'll make sure that we get that on our, on our product roadmap. I highly recommend that you don't do that. Document your requirements first and make sure that you find the vendors that are going to meet those requirements with their functionality. Okay. Number two is explore everything. Talk to everyone. Okay. Don't just rely on the, the, you know, the usual suspects and also get a 30 day free trial. A lot of, a lot of vendors will say, Oh, we can't do that. Or we'll only give you seven days, get a 30 day free trial. And then also maybe extend it. Uh, because if you're anything like me, you're going to want to dig in. You're going to want to, tr you know, try to break the system uh, because I guarantee you, if you don't, um, and then you launch it with your clients, if you're at an agency or if you work in house, you know, you're going to, you know, realize that something's not working and you don't know what the right solution is. And so get that 30 day free trial, get users in it, start to use it, start to, you know, run reports and start to think about whether or not you can live with this type of data. And then lastly, it's choose wisely. Obviously this is, you know, common and it's really self-explanatory. No need for me to talk through that. Validate with third-party endorsements. Uh, get a contact list from your vendor on uh, current customers. That's, that's huge, right? Because then you can ask them the questions and the pain points that they have, okay? So those are the three focus areas. And then from, a, from an analysis standpoint, as I said, research the usual suspects. There's the Gartner Magic Quadrant. There's the Forrester Wave. There's the G2 crowd and their version of the, of the, of the quadrant. Um, but this is only going to give you a little bit, right? Because when the analyst community, when they are researching software, they're researching it and they're, they're looking at demos, they're not using it, right? They're not going in and they're not actually building reports and writing Boolean and exporting data. They are simply looking at it, asking questions and interviewing. So you only get like 20% of, of the story when you look at the analyst community. G2 Crowd, you get a little bit more depth because people are writing reviews, if there are reviews. So you have to, that's why I say it's, the 30 day free trial is huge because you can start to validate some of the, the written reports that these uh, analysts, the analyst community is uh, publishing about it and then make a decision yourself. Uh, and then research more. And this is an, an, a quick analysis that we did um, on social analytics vendors. And this is looking at the last six months. And this is real data from, from literally, again, the last six months. Just wanted to understand like what was the conversation um, about um, social vendors that people are having. Again, this is anybody who is, has a voice and has a social account and it's broken down. If you look to the right, this is what I would call a, a, a conversational, a, a cluster map or a, a topic analysis. And within the context of social analytics, you know, the top co the conversation drivers are those internal uh, color-coded topics, customer success, API, data limits, easy to use, cost, competitors, integration. Though, and it's all based on volume. So customer success, because it's, you know, the red is, is bigger, that simply means that there's more volume of conversation as it relates to customer success. Within that, within that same quadrant, you have ticket, support, weekends, mistake, happy phone. Those are all subtopics within customer success. So you can get a quick glimpse at what is the conversation right now as it relates to people and this is, this is not vendor conversations. These are customers and people in general um, about data limits, right? It's about rolling over data, fire hose access, LinkedIn, APIs, things like that. So you can start to begin to understand like, you, and you can do this at the, at the brand level, right? You can look up a brand watch or a NetBase or a Synthesio to see, and you, oh, by the way, you can also look up in Reddit and, and, and forums just to see what the conversation is. Um, and you can identify pain points that way or, you know, people, you know, expressing joy and love uh, for software. 
So um, anyhow, moving on to the five questions. Now, these are not necessarily questions you are going to ask your vendor, right? These are questions you need to ask yourself, which will then turn into questions uh, for your vendor. And the problem is, is that, again, so many vendors are, are very, and their salespeople are very aggressive. And they're going to come to you and say, hey, we can do this, 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 and this. And for 20% off our annual rate, and if you sign before, you know, the end of the month, you know, we'll give it the software to you for this amount. And, the, and, and, and that's a challenge because, you know, you think it's a good deal and you didn't have time to go through the platform yourself, but it's great because you're going to save 10 grand a year. Um, you have to understand, again, what is it that you're trying to achieve? And, and that'll help narrow down your list of vendors. Now, these are, this is the way I categorize social analytics. Uh, it's not the same for everybody, but you know, I have a black and white mind, right? I don't like gray. So I like to see things as black and white. It helps me, helps my decision-making because partly because I'm ADD. So I can be focused on, on categorizing my thinking, right? So for example, social intelligence, these are some of the top vendors that I've worked with in the past. Some of them are mentioned in the, in the magic quadrants. Others aren't. Um, some of them are global companies. Some of them are, uh, you know, say that they're global. Uh, some of them are owned by larger entities like Synthesio. So again, these are the vendors that I would think about for social intelligence. When we're looking at analyzing people and audiences, these are the vendors that I would you know, think about looking at from audience to Analytica. Now, interestingly enough, Analytica is more positioned as an influencer identification and management tool. But when I used to use it and, and what I recommend clients to use it for is building audiences. Uh, because they have a, a, a pretty nice system where you can look up bio searches and content searches um, and find and export audiences that way. And audience does that as well. And, and their, their analytics around affinities and their integration with Watson is pretty amazing. So the third one is more content analytics, right? So this is, I mentioned Alexa a while ago, News Whip. Quid is, Quid is one of those... Uh, Quid is an interesting platform and I, I love it actually because their visualizations are amazing, but the way that they look at coverage and content is pretty amazing. And then this is pretty self-explanatory data visualization. So again, the reason why I bring these up is because a lot of times a vendor is going to say, yeah, we do this, 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 and this. And again, they may touch on a piece of it, right? They may, uh, they may say like, we can identify influencers. But, but, you know, and, and Brandwatch does that to an extent, and so does TalkWalker and others, but I would prefer more of a specialized platform like an Analytica or a Tracker because um, that's their core focus, right? Their development teams are focused on, uh, hopefully, on building a better experience and using better analytics to identify influencers. Whereas, you know, you have platforms like a Sprinkler, for example, who d they do it all, right? And so the question I have is, where are your development resources allocated to? Because if I'm looking just for, for influencers, I want to make sure that you have development teams and you're pushing out code to improve your platform on the daily or weekly so that we get a better product at the end of the day. So again, ask questions, be skeptical, and try to isolate your needs and prioritize them. Because you know, while some of these platforms do do more than just social intelligence, um, others do it better and others do better content analytics. So again, just again, the 30 day free trial is what I recommend here. The second kind of question I ask is ask the business questions. It's not always about functionality and features. Now, this is where it may, may get a little uncomfortable, right? And sometimes the, the vendor might not want to give you, if it's a publicly public company, you can get the data information yourself. If it's a private company, um, you know, you're going to have to ask them and some vendors will be open with you. You know, they'll ask you to sign an NDA and you can obviously share their revenue numbers publicly, but you know, what is their revenue? How are they funded? How much cash do they have in the bank? How many customers have they signed for an annual agreement? Right? So these are important for me because the last thing you want to do is sign up with a vendor and they go out of business. Right? So you have, you, you know, you have years of data, you have people trained across the organization and all of a sudden they run out of money or they close their doors and you kind of lose everything. The, the second one is who are their customers? And if they don't have any fortune 500 or fortune 1000, I'd be a little skeptical. If you are a small business, that's, it doesn't matter. Right? Um, so I would then ask still, who are your customers and what is their renewal rate? 
Are they renewing contracts every year? How many customers have been on for more than five years, 10 years? That's probably going a little bit too far, um, but that'll tell you the loyalty that their customers have with their software product. How large is their development team? I can't stress this enough. How often are they, excuse me, um, uh, how often are they hiring new developers? What is their retention rate? So are they having developers in and out? Because that's going to affect the, the, the software development life cycle. If you have new developers cycling in and out, then that is going to de delay uh, the code. It's going to de delay the product. And so that is a, you know, these are questions to ask. And again, they may not give you an answer or be straightforward with you, but I think you need to ask these things because it'll help you, I think, go from at least a list of 10 vendors down to five and maybe two or three because some of these are, are super important for your business. And then lastly, what is on their product roadmap? What are they planning to do? And how often are they pushing new code? Is it weekly? Is it monthly? Is it quarterly? That'll give you a good idea of their innovation and, and their, their resources behind the firewall and what they're, what, how they're innovating the product and improving it, okay? So these are questions that aren't necessarily focused on the features and benefits and functionality and integration, right? Th those are all important too. This is about their business, right? Is it a sustainable business that is, you know, going to go public or are they going to, you know, acquire or be acquired or form some type of joint partnership? We've seen acquisitions happen a lot over the last, you know, five, six years. So these are questions that are going to be important for you to, to have that will help you decide. The, the, the other question that you need to really focus on is who are your users? Who is going to be using this product? Okay. So document those and also the use cases because Hopefully you have, you know, obviously analysts are going to be using it. And my experience is, is that your analysts and your data scientists, they're not going to spend a lot of time in the platform, right? They're not going to be clicking around, looking at visualizations. They're going to find what they need and export it, right? That's what they do. They prefer, they want to live in Excel and Tableau and others. That's what they want to do. So you have to make sure that, that their experience, that the export um, they're, you know, understand the limit that they export limits, right? Is it 50,000 exports a day or mentions a day? Those are going to be important for the analyst um, and your data scientists and your IT community, your users. Also your digital marketing teams, what are they going to be using it for? Because it's not going to be the same thing as your data scientist. They're going to be looking at pulling reports, whether it's around campaigns or your day-to-day -day drumbeat of, of content marketing. They're going to do real-time listening and engagement with audiences. Your PR teams are going to be looking for coverage reports. They're going to want to understand, okay, is this platform available to manage and uh, a crisis or an issue that is happening in the marketplace and allow us to respond quickly, okay? Uh, and the last is like everybody else, right? So this is maybe executives or product teams or even partners. I've seen instances where that happens. And again, each of these groups have fundamental differences in how they're going to use the software. So ensuring that your software addresses their concerns is going to be very important because you're going to, otherwise you're going to have teams are, that are going to be unhappy with their experience or their lack of ability to do something, whether it's exporting limits or API integration or, you know, data limits, things of that nature. Um, the next question you ask is what are you willing to give up? Because the reality is, is that you can have it all. And despite what vendors will say, they don't do it all. I guarantee you that. I, I've spent countless hours um, asking questions, digging in, exporting, importing, uploading, and you name it, to several, I would say the top 10 to 11 um, software or social intelligence, audio intelligence platforms. And I can tell you, they don't do it all. So the question you have to ask yourself is, is can you live without unlimited data, right? So if there, is there a cap on mentions? Personally, I hate that. I, I can't stand caps on mentions because I, I want the whole story. And so when you mention, when you, when you cap data um, or you, you limit it by month or monthly, um, you don't get the full story. And so you're missing a lot of data. Are you okay with unlimited users or excuse me, are you okay with not having unlimited users? Because these, this is the reality is, is that some vendors price their platforms based on how many seats you have. And so you're not going to get unlimited data and unlimited users. 
Okay. And if, and if they say that I would read the fine print unlimited exports. So most of the vendors that I work with, there's like a daily limit of 5,000, um, uh, mentions or exports, not exports in total, but data points within an export of 5,000 per day uh, per user. And so if you have 15 users, that's a lot of data to export. Again, you can't have all of this together. So you need to prioritize what is important for you. And then the unlimited dashboards. Now, depending upon the nomenclature on how the vendors are, are um, uh, what they label their software. So is it a query? Is it a dashboard? Is it a search? Is it you know, uh, you know, all of the, a monitor for the old school Crimson Hexagon users. So all, it depends upon what you need. When you say unlimited dashboards, is that unlimited searches? Or is it just unlimited visualizations of the searches, right? So again, ask these questions um, and be prepared to um, not have unlimited data or unlimited users or un unlimited exports. Now, what you should not budge on and what you should insist is customer success. Okay. Is your customer success manager, does he leave every Friday at five o'clock? And is he not going to answer emails till Monday morning? Now, if there's a crisis and something's not working, I'm going to pick up the phone. And if I can't get my customer success manager, I'm going to try to call the CEO of the company because if it's my business and there's something happening and my you know, customer success manager is not responding to my emails, even though it's on a Friday night, then there's a problem. So, you know, make sure that you find a vendor where the customer success team and manager are vested in your business, that, that they are, that they want to be a part of your team, you know, and, and I, maybe this is a lot to ask for, but, but this to me is, you know, and I've had success managers before that, that are like that, right? Their success hinges on our success. And so when you can partner like that, then they're more, you know, prone to respond quickly. You know, it's not 24 or 48 hours later, but you know, they're, they're or they'll text you, right? They'll say, Hey, if, if it's an issue, here's my number, text me. Okay. And if you're spending a hundred thousand dollars, $200,000 a year on software, then you better get the, the, the phone number of your customer success manager or whoever's in charge of your account. Um, so that if there is an issue, they can respond quickly. And then the uptime. 99% uptime uh, up is the industry standard. Now, there's been instances a, a few times in my career where something just didn't work and it just happened, that 1% happened to be on a day that I need to, needed to deliver a report to a client. And so I was at the agency and it just, again, it just uh, was a very stressful uh, day for me because something was not working. It doesn't happen all the time, but these are things that you should demand uh, from your your you know social intelligence vendor audience you name it now again you can't have everything at the top but you should have a, a vested customer success manager and at a minimum 99 percent uptime of the software the last question i want to just leave you with is will they innovate with you and i say that because as a, as a as someone who is always thinking about new ways to reach audiences and you know, understand and analyze the media or conversations or web traffic and web behavior, I'm always looking for innovative and different ways to do that because that's what differentiates what we do with other people. And so the question then is, can you find a vendor who is willing to innovate with you? And those are the best partners to have because they now they improve the product for everybody else that's using it but you are kind of first to market with new thinking, with new functionality, with new ways to uncover insights using um, a particular platform. And I want to just show this, the, these two slides. And this is, for those of you who've been in the industry for a long time, this was Dell's social media command center. And they built this command center back in 2009, 2010. And I'm not quite sure what it looks like today, but they built, built it using Radian 6. And, and for those of you who don't know or remember, Radian 6 was acquired by Salesforce now, about, I think, five, six, maybe seven years ago. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because Radian 6 and Dell innovated. They innovated together, and it made Radian 6 a much better product, and it gave Dell the opportunity to listen and, and build their, you know, their plans and their marketing and you know, their teams 
around this command center. And so if you are anything like me and you want to improve and figure out new ways, I mean, I lose sleep over this sometimes because I'm always trying to think about the next thing. And um, if you can find a good vendor to partner with, um, I highly recommend that you prioritize that characteristic um, because that is going to help you achieve your goals much faster than the vendors that say, no, this is our roadmap. This is what we do. We'll take that into consideration, but we can't make any promises. And with that, I'm going to just say thank you again for listening. Um, I hope that this session for you was actionable. I hope that you were able to get some things that you didn't already know. Uh, the last thing I want to do is share something and, and give you everything that you already know. What's the point of this session if it is? So I just wanted to say, again, appreciate your time and, and please ask any questions. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it back over. Uh, thank you, Jillian, for your support and uh, making this come to, happen, come to life. Michael, that was fantastic. I I think everyone will have learned a lot there. And there was certainly a few questions that are very uncommon for people to ask, but as you see, very, very, very needed. Um, if you have got any questions for Michael that we're not going to cover here because we've got quite a short session today, please do email us again at hello at the SILab.com and we'll pass them across to Michael and we'll get the responses for you. Um, it's just email as many questions as you like um, and we'll, 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 get them, we'll get them back. But I've got a few here. Um, document requirements. I think that this is an interesting one because I sometimes don't think that everybody knows what the requirements are. And we just did a report with the vendors and they were saying that when people take demos, they just take a general demo and they don't really ask any questions or do anything else. How do you think that people should get started in documenting those requirements? Well, I would just, um, you know, certainly start internally. Talk, talk with other stakeholders to find out how they're using the platform. You know, for us, it's, it's I mean, our requirements are pretty robust. And I put that Excel document in, in, in I think, the, the beginning of the slides yeah. here that start to list out common use cases for social intelligence. You know, so the ability to export APIs, um, you know, being able to pull in multiple data points into one dashboard is one requirement that we have. The sampling is a big thing, right? And being able to have access to 100% of the data versus 10% of it or 15% of it. So I think that, again, it, it's for, for those who don't have a ton of experience with this, um, you're, you're not going to need the 30-day free trial, right? You're going you're gonna to need the basics. And I think that that demo of the, the high level, you know, 30 minute, 60 minute long demo is, is enough. But, you know, again, think long term, right? Is your PR team's going to use this? Are, are your, you know, web marketing team's going to use this? And if so, what do you think they're going to need from the software? And so if you can do that and start doing what I call a mind map, which is just like this, you know, on a whiteboard where you just start plotting out everything, um, that is a yeah, exactly. That's a great place to start. Um, so without really knowing and understanding your business for the, for the person who asked that question, it's hard for me to give you anything specific, but I think as, as Jillian mentioned, happy to, uh, you know, meet, meet and talk and converse over Twitter or, you know, email um, to, if you were to give me more of a specifics on what your business is, I can help flesh, flesh those out for you. That's amazing. So I got the impression from when we were talking, when you were talking through your presentation that you agree with tool stacking and that I, I think it was very clear that your advice is don't listen to the vendors that no tool does everything. And I think we need to keep on reiterating that again and again. Um, so you, uh, uh, when you're going through, are you looking for integrations between the different technologies to make sure that they, connect, they can connect up properly or are, have you got some other way of being able to connect them? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, that's something, you know, we do a lot of exporting and importing, right? So for example, we use audience to build audiences and, you know, they're not really a social listening platform, which is great because they do audience intelligence extremely well. And so we export audiences once we build them and we put them into a different platform to um, monitor conversations and kind of real time opportunities. And so, um, but what I do like and not, you know, I'm name dropping a little bit, but 
we're all amongst friends here. You know, the, the integration between in, um, audience and Pulsar, I think is a pretty interesting one because, you know, there, it kind of cuts out the export. Now, again, for me, honestly, I, I don't like exporting. It just takes time. And I'm not a huge fan of Excel, but my analyst is. And so I think they're, you know, the build, ability to build audiences and, and, and build, you know, bring them over to uh, the listening platform on Pulsar, I think is, is great because it just, it saves time, it's more efficient, and it's very easy to do, right? So when you start talking about exporting and importing, it becomes a little bit more, um, you know, sophisticated. It's, it's a little bit more work, obviously. Um, and there's always a little bit more room for error when you do things like that. So yeah, I think that's great when we see vendors who have, you know, backend APIs together. Uh, that to me is, is a great, um, it's a plus for me when I'm evaluating software for sure. Yeah, no, definitely. The old um, export import, you can never get them in um, all in one go or out all in one go either. Um, it, can take quite a, it can take quite a bit of time. I think just before we round up, I just want to touch upon the customer success manager as well and the, that relationship there. It's something that we've mentioned before and we, we get a lot of calls and emails um, about deteriorating relationships. Um, so how, do, how would you go about assessing whether or not that, that customer success team is going to work for you? Yeah, I've, it's, it's like hiring a, you know, an agency or a house cleaner. You know, you, you have to interview them. And, and again, if you're, you, you have more leverage with more, the more money you spend, right? Yeah. You know, if you're, if you're a fortune company and you're spending, you know, triple figures in software, then you could say, you know, I think I don't, not sure about our customer success manager, who else is there that we can use? So uh, interview them. And I think also establishing a rapport with them and a relationship early on is important because Typically, when you know you do that, they're more uh, prompt. They're more prompt in their emails back to you. Uh, they will respond faster. Um, they, if you include them in, you know, brainstorms, or you know, if you you know include them in a team meeting and invite them to to meet your teams, things like that. They again, I think that just invites collaboration. It invites relationships. Yeah. And uh, typically, when you do stuff like that, you know, and extend a hand you know, one will get extended back to you and they will, now you you shouldn't do it just for the sake of, you know, wanting them to respond faster. You really should try to <laughs> build a rapport with them. Um, and, and nine times out of 10, they're going to respond faster and they're going to be, feel like you're, they're an extension of your team. So when you're, when the platform goes down, you know, it's affecting their business too, not just mine or yours. No, that that's brilliant. Well, that's all we've got time for just now. I could sit and talk to you all afternoon, but maybe we'll, if we've got some questions coming in, we can maybe jump back on and, and, and do another video together. Uh, to Anytime. Get answers out to anyone. But thank you so much for participating in our first tech demo day. Um, that, was, that was awesome. Thanks, Michael. You're welcome. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.